So this is uh, uh, the third day on the law of karma. Um, it is a great moment, great joy for all, for all of us to be together and uh, feel the teaching of the Buddha. All of us, including myself, to learn about the teaching of the Buddha and the many of the concepts which we're going to share with you. Um, for some of you, it may be already you are already familiar with, and yet to reinforce the concepts, reinforce the the cognitive understanding of these concepts and the imbibing of these concepts within oneself. And then the, the part on the question answers. So there are questions from the, the, this hall as well as from upstairs. And the questions are on the line with the, the table. So we'll do also do the question answers. So with this in mind, um, say the everyone in Singapore, generally speaking, are very busy. So amidst your busy schedule, um, the, we all come together here for a very noble the endeavor, for a noble, very noble uh, goal, that is to activate the seed of Buddha nature within us, to activate the seed of perfection within us. Seed of perfection meaning that what we seek is the fearlessness that all our fears should dissolve, then what we seek is infinite happiness, that happiness must, must multiply. These are two aspirations that we have, whether you're Buddhist or non-Buddhist, whether you're Singaporean or non-Singaporean, whether you're boys or girls, it doesn't matter, educated or uneducated, wealthy, and the, the very normal person, it doesn't matter. We all have these two aspirations. The point is that whatever aspirations that we have, if you consolidate all the thought processes and so forth, we see that these are two aspirations. To achieve that, any step that you take to achieve that, that becomes your path. And if possible, think of how to make this path as your path, not only in this life, but the future lifetimes as well, so that the till you reach the point where you reach the state where the Buddhahood inside, the Buddha nature inside becomes manifest fully, till that point you are not separated from this path. That is so precious. And in, and in this connection, so many the discussions on the guru devotion, all these things are coming in the air, guru devotions and so forth, it's a the very complicated matter. So and the, what I would suggest is, for example, this kind of teaching has nothing to do with guru devotion. It's all about learning the teaching of the Buddha. And uh, say the, just to learn the teaching of the Buddha, there is no need for you to rush. People tend to, okay, oh, my friend has a root guru, my this friend has a root guru, so they said root guru is very important, so I also, I'm also looking for a root guru. So one blind person leading another blind person. This is totally irrelevant. No hurry to look for root gurus. Study. Hurry to study. No hurry. No hurry to look for root gurus. Hurry. There is hurry to study well. Study well. Make a meaning out of your life. To see that, okay, now after studying about law of karma, my, my life is much easy, easier now. Earlier, for small things, I used to feel so agitated. Now realizing that, this, even this what is happening, this experience is all because of my own, the previous actions. So now I feel more calm. And even these actions, they are coming not from elsewhere, coming from the thought processes, which we call as the afflictive emotions. And these emotions, they also arise from the, the cognitive misperception. Misperception happening place, they have they taking place with my own mind. And the moment you rectify this misperception, then the emotions, the destructive emotions are rectified. Then your, part, the, the, your smile comes out, the glow comes out. Okay. Then automatically all the actions, physical, verbal actions, they come out to be very meaningful. Say, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is very practical. So he would say that if but you by 
being there and other people feel more relaxed, which means that you are a good person. You, by being there, everybody around, they become a little tense. Something's wrong with you. So this is where we need to change. We can change. And if you see that you, by being there, and other people, they feel a little tense, a little uncomfortable, um, the which means there's something wrong with you. That wrong is not who you are. It's not who you are. And that, that wrong thing is the obscuration. It's like the soil which obscures this gold from glowing. So therefore, you, who you are, that beautiful nature, this beautiful nature of the glow within you, full of compassion, full of wisdom, Oh, that is there within you, that is being blurred, that is being obscured, that is being veiled by, the, um, by this, you know, what we see as wrong, which makes other people intense, uneasy, uncomfortable. Okay, so this can be rectified. How do we rectify? This is what we're going to discuss to the best we can in these two sessions. Meanwhile, any questions that you might have, uh, say those downstairs, you can ask, direct through the microphone, those upstairs, uh, you can send through the, the piece of paper. And I already got some. There's okay, there's mic upstairs, very good. Then the, um, the upstairs, the, but how will I know? <laughs> okay, then the upstairs, you can say that, okay, if I have a question from upstairs, then I will know. Okay, so those are who, who are holding the, the mic upstairs. You just say, upstairs question number one. And then I will say, yes, okay, you can ask this question. That's very good. I'll be very happy that the upstairs also is connected directly. Very good. Okay, with this mind, the, to be very honest, for myself as well, not only for you, for myself also, to be with all of you. Even one moment of being together with a smile, with the feeling of, you know, the, the brotherhood, sisterhood, that is so precious. That is so precious. Say, in your family, together with your parents, together with your children, together with your, say, the, the partners, whatever. So there, say, just one moment of, say, the, <coughs> how are you? One moment of, do you like a cup of tea? This one moment is so precious, so precious. Let us, simply let, let us celebrate in jubilance of this beautiful moment together. So here together in TBC. So we're all together here, and uh, the, of course, this is all coming because of the blessings of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and the, all the efforts of the, the volunteers here, um, the, and particularly the, the founding director, um, Jimbala, Mr. Jimbala, and then the, now the, the president, um, Divini Lam, and the vice president, the uh, the Wayne Tenzambala, and then we have the secretary uh, Perry Lam, and then many uh, many other vol volunteers here, volunteers. So the all these ESCO members, and who are really put a putting effort, and then you partaking in this program of TBC, that itself is um, finally there must be some purpose in the life. Okay, with that in mind just to celebrate this occasion, and tomorrow is going to be the Sakadawa, the, Saka, the, the month, the fourth month, um, the, the day the Buddha Shakyamuni they displayed three very important deeds, divine deeds, one the birth, then the enlightenment, and the Mahabharata Nirvana. The, the three occasions on the same date, this is what the Buddha Shakyamuni, our very compassionate teacher Buddha Shakyamuni displayed. So, as the eve of that very important occasion, uh, we are the engaged in a, the meaningful and virtuous action. This is how we have to grow. See, even we have some difficulties now. And then instead of saying, okay, I'm so difficult, I'm so feeling so tired, the, okay, so today I'll skip going to TPC, today I'll skip going to ABC, I feel tired, I'm mentally, I'm not. Okay, generally speaking, where we need to rest, this, even the Buddha taught what is known as the enthusiasm of respite. Otherwise, enthusiasm means you have to work hard. 
this is not always the connotation. It has multiple connotations. One of which the Buddha said is enthusiasm, respite. When you when you overexert and when you feel so tired, burn out, the Buddha said, take respite. Take rest. Take rest. This will make you do engage, delve in the teachings of the Buddha more enthusiastically, energetically the next time. So the enthusiasm of respite is taught. Meanwhile, say then say we start complaining, oh I'm not happy, this is this is so weird, this is so bad, this is like this. We complain, 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 we're adding to our problems. Instead, we're nothing. Each one of us, the true nature of us is so pure, fearless, very calm, compassionate, full of wisdom. And yet when that is not happening, means that the we, each one of us, for example, this beautiful flower, this bunch of the, the bouquet of the flower, is nothing but made of the individual flowers. And just look at these beautiful white, the, the flowers, very tiny flowers there. They are like almost thousands of these tiny flowers there. And these the beautiful flowers, the bigger ones, they're made of, say, many, like hundreds of the petals. So likewise, we are made of the very tiny flowers and tiny petals. Which, in other words, we are all dependent origination. We all depend on origination. Meaning that we're all like a, say, we're all like a worn out stupa. Worn out stupa. So why? Stupa is very precious, but it's worn out. So pe people prefer to go to a glowing stupa. So we, people don't come to us because we are like a worn out stupa. We are not a glowing stupa. So how come that we become a worn out stupa? Because this stupa is made of worn out bricks. This stupa is made of bricks, individual bricks. Individual bricks are not the stupa. Individual bricks are not the stupa. But dependence on these individual bricks, the stupa is originated, dependent origination. So likewise, we are made of individual bricks, very tiny, small, small bricks. Totally together, it gives the impression that appearance that, oh, this is Mr. Jimba there, this is Vanilla there, this is Perilla there, this is, okay, Ash there, right? So like this, the, we get the feeling. Otherwise, we're but uh, like a stupa. If you want to change the stupa, how should I do? If you want, you want to change this one of stupa to glowing stupa, demolish the stupa, bring out the no need. Keep the stupa as it is, remove one brick, one one out brick, replace it with a golden brick. The next day, again, remove another one out brick, replace it with a golden brick. Eventually, it'll start to glow. Likewise, we remove one bad habit today, replace it with a good habit. Tomorrow, you again remove a bad habit and replace it with a good habit. And the third, you learn something. You learn something, then ignorance. Learn is the wisdom. Opposite of wisdom is ignorance. Ignorance removed. One worn out, one, one worn out brick of the ignorance removed. Replace it with the golden brick of the knowledge. So this, and then eventually you start to glow. You start to glow, then you see that, wow, it's amazing. I'm no more a one of stupa, I'm, I'm a glowing stupa. Okay, this is how we should keep in mind. See, in other words, we all should be happy. Number one thing is, be happy. This is so important. Never ever, never ever think of making yourself unhappy unnecessarily. The first important thing is, make yourself happy. And even the dharma is for your happiness. Your happiness is not for dharma, don't forget it. Dharma is for your happiness, not your happiness for dharma. Don't forget it. The Buddha taught the dharma, not for the sake of dharma. Buddha taught the dharma to make us happy. So dharma should be for our happiness, not for our happiness for the dharma. Don't forget it. With this mind, first priority is make sure that each one of us be a happy person. Be happy. Only when you are happy, you can export happiness to others. Only you have multiple goals, you have numerous goals, only then you can export gold. If you don't have gold at all, how can you export gold? If you don't have happiness at all yourself, how can you export happiness? So the first thing that you keep in mind is maintain happiness. The next question, how to maintain happiness? This next question. So this happiness is a product, it's a dependent origination. So for, for this, say like good food will make us happy, how to make a good food? Because of multiple ingredients. Likewise, 
to maintain a very happy state of mind, it depends on multiple factors. So what we're doing here is an incredibly great factor which can contribute to, the, to your happiness. Okay, for that matter, to make this factor very, yeah, say, the concise and meaningful, um, setting and problem motivation. Three points, refuge field, both of the field, and the purpose of this practice, purpose of this class and the practice. First, the refuge field, okay, sit properly. Um, refuge field, two points, what to visualize and how to visualize. What to visualize? Visualize Buddha Shakyamuni, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Arya Manjushri, Arya Vlukhteshvara, Arya Maitreya, Arya Vajrapani, Arya Thara, then Arya Gishida Garba, Arya Samadavatra, Arya Nigarjuna, Arya Deva, then the, um, the Acharya Nagabodhi, Acharya Buddha Padita, Acharya Chandrakirti, Borsar Shanti Deva, Borsar Shanti Rakshita, Acharya Kamal Shil, Acharya Haribhadra, then Lama Selingpa from Indonesia, Lama Atisha, Lama Atisha from India, and all the, the enlightened teachers of the Chinese Nalanda tradition, of all the enlightened teachers of the Tibetan tradition, all the enlightened teachers of the Theravada Buddhism. Okay, let's visualize them. Number two, how you visualize them, that makes the whole difference. That gives the strength, the quality to your refuge. The strength of refuge is determined by the second point. That is how you visualize them. Visualize them as your very affectionate parents, and imagine that you come home demoralized, being bullied by the elder children at school. Your parents are waiting there with tremendous love and affection to embrace you with total love and affection. And this is a fact. It's not what we are reifying. This is a fact that we are discovering. This is a fact that all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they love you so much. It's only the matter of our lacking, our lacking, our lacking the merit to see them. Otherwise, if we are to see them directly, they, this is what they display as so affectionate loving towards you. Visualize your two parents on your two sides and all other demons and chimps around you. And how you visualize them. Here, you are the mother, and all others are like children. And imagine, they come home demoralized, and you are there to give full love, affection, embrace. And the whole purpose, number three, the purpose of this practice, purpose of this class, is to awaken the seed of perfection that exists within each one of us. In what we are today, that we don't get a good job, that we are not, physically we are not healthy, and mentally so unhappy and so forth. This is not your true nature. This is very adventitious nature. Your true nature is full of happiness, full of compassion, full of happiness, and the state of fearlessness. There's no trace of fear within you. This is the true nature. But why this not manifest is because that true nature is obscured by the mental defilements. The way the gold, although the nature is to glow, but when mixed with the soil, it doesn't glow. So how do we make this gold come out? By removing the, the soil, remove the soil gradually. Likewise, how to make this glow of the fearlessness and the glow of the infinite happiness within you to come out, manifest? By removing the metal stain. How to remove the metal stains? Metal stains out of two kinds, the gross and the subtle one, like a solid garlic, and the subtle stain, the subtle smell of the garlic. First remove the solid garlic from the mug, then this, the, or removing the solid garlic, 
the smell will be left. Then you can think of removing the smell, the smell gradually. So the solid garlic like mental defilements are known as afflictive obscurations. And the subtle smell like the, the smell like the smell of the garlic is known as the cognitive obscurations. Afflictive obscurations, the first one, the gross one, in the presence of this stops us from achieving fearlessness or the nirvana. Nirvana is to be understood as fearlessness. And the subtle stains of the mind um, stop us from achieving total omniscience or the Buddhahood, the infinite happiness. Now to eradicate these two mental defilements, the remedy remains the same. This afflictive obscuration is of three kinds. Contaminated commas, afflictions, and the active seeds. So all these three, somehow they are rooted, somehow connected, linked with the self grasping ignorance. It's a misconception of the self, which we learned yesterday. So the remedy, because it is related to this misconception of self, self grasping ignorance, the counterforce must be the wisdom to know the reality of the self. So the wisdom of emptiness of the self. Then on the other hand, the cognitive obscurations, the subtle stains, to get rid of this, the remedy remains the same, the wisdom of emptiness, but the driving force, the motivation must be very intense. The motivation must be the motivation of bodhicitta. So this bodhicitta must be grounded, supported by uh, great compassion and grounded on renunciation. Okay, with this basic motivation to improve ourselves, to remove the mental defilements, to improve ourselves, to discover this treasure inside us in the form of following the, the path, Gade, gade, para, gade, para, samgade, bodhi, swaha. Uh, you are leading this, and all sentient beings are joining you, and particularly those of us and the, who your parents are not with you, who your other family members are not with you. Just visualize, let us not miss to visualize them around you, and then let them also take part in this, in this practice and uh, the, the, do the prayers together. Okay, page two. Enthused by great compassion, you taught the Makri Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Enthused by great compassion, you taught the Makri Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Enthused by compassion, you taught the Makri Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. In dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme among all teachers, the one who taught this peace, which is freed of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the Buddhas and of the heroes and bodhisattvas, who through the knowledge of all leads here are seeking pacification to complete peace, who through the knowledge of past horses to hold my grace to achieve the aims of the world. And through the possession of omniscience, the subduer has set forth the varieties having all aspects. The one who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings. The teacher, sugada and protector, to you I make prostrations. The one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound. Who eternally shines for the forever noble light rays to you, the Buddha, I make prostrations. Okay, let's recite this mantra three times together. Um, those of us who can recite it well, recite, join, and those of us who are more like first time, listen to us and join us. Om ye dharma hetu prabhavam. He tum te sham tathagato hevatat te sham chayo niroda evam bati mahashramana yeswaha om ye dharma he tu prabhava he tum te sham tathagato yavatat te sham chayo niroda evam bhati mahashramana yeswaha 
All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the causes as well is taught by the great seer. The next page. I go for refuge and turn enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulation of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulation of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Inspired. Okay, I go for refuge and turn enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations of the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I turn in mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, we will do a quick meditation. A five minutes meditation. Okay, the, for the meditation, the last two days, I've been talking about the, the need for us to keep in mind four points. One is the body posture, number two is the focal point, number three, what is number three? Very good. Identifying the errors of meditation, number four, applying the remedies to overcome the errors. Very good, okay, four points. And the, there are many people who do meditation, but who are not being uh, so careful. And because of which, they come up with very strange experiences. Like, okay, in the meditation I see like lights. And some people, they say, I meditate in my, I see buildings. But what kind of meditation they are doing? Buildings coming up, I don't know. Right? So, and that this, I'm not, they, I'm not fabricating, I'm not exaggerating. This is a real incident that happened. Somebody reported to me after three years of meditation, this outcome. Buildings are coming up in the, in the meditation. Okay. So, this is all because of the callousness pertaining to the last two points. Identifying the errors of meditation and applying the remedies to overcome the errors. Okay. Identify the errors of meditation. Say, Meaning, to make it very simple, if I want to meditate on the Buddha image, it must be Buddha image. Anything else that comes to your mind are totally redundant, totally irrelevant to you. Even if something so virtuous things coming to you, it has nothing to do with you. So you have to just ignore. Don't reject, just ignore. Focus on what you should be meditating. In some cases, with the marriage, whatever meditation that you're doing, then as there's the, 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 a sudden surge of the blissful experience, calmness will come to you. And then you just ruminate over this, this bliss or the calmness of the tickling sensation, whatever. You just ruminate over them. Again, you're lost. You're not meditating. So no matter what wonderful experiences come to you, sometimes as well like you're just one with the whole cosmos. Usually these things happen when you close your eyes. As well as you are just one with the whole cosmos. This is what happens to you when you keep your eyes closed. And this is a big problem. Okay. Um, this disconnects you from the reality. In reality, everything is discrete. There's no, you know, the, there's no one cosmic thing which combines all of us. But you close your eyes, do the meditation for quite an extended period of time. You feel that as well as you are just one with everyone. And you wake, you come out of meditation, you, we are all different. So this is being disconnected. Because of this meditation, this is disconnect with the reality. In other words, this being very unrealistic. Okay. With the emptiness meditation, with the emptiness meditation, there are times when you see everything is one. It's not everything is one. Everything is devoid of the differences. And devoid of the differences and being one, these two are different, these two are not one. 
be devoid of the differences, devoid of the, devoid of the discretion, the lack of differences, and being one is different. Okay, so the, uh, because of which some practitioners, they describe the experience of emptiness as one taste, where everything is just like one, devoid of the difference. It's like not, any, not actually one, but they get a feeling that it's like one, but you should focus on what you should be meditating on. Okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into detail, but amongst the, 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 the newcomers or those who are, and have not been really doing meditation, for you, you must seek a good teacher to teach you how to meditate. Even from the beginning, it should not be flawed from the beginning. You must seek a good teacher. Okay, so here we have Gishi and Delancey here in TBC. We have then the teachers in ABC there. And there must be other good teachers there. You must be in uh, good hands. This is very important. Okay. So with this in mind, five minutes, ready. Okay, um, before we do the question answers, <clears throat> okay, first the I like to the from where we left yesterday about the free will and free will versus the karma. Because this is going to be a little technical, I want to leave it most likely the second session or maybe the second half of this. Okay, how many of you are, um, how many of you feel that, no, 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 this must be done now? Raise your hands. Or this must be done now. Or, okay, it's fine, you can do it any anytime you like. Raise your hands. You can do it any time you like, raise hands. It doesn't really matter. Okay, it does matter, raise hands right now. Okay, so which means, because this is a little technical, uh, the, only if you feel that this is the, oh, this is, very, this is um, the, uh, the way I waited eagerly to listen to my teacher's answer, and finally what answer came from my teacher? Did you hear this? What answer came from my teacher? Huh? Dorji just give some answers, right? Okay, so the way I waited so eagerly to listen to this answer from my teacher, if there are people who are so eagerly waiting for this answer, okay, this is one thing. Otherwise, it's going to be a little technical. I want to keep it the aside for the time being. Okay, instead, uh, what we can think of doing is that the um, say all what is happening to us, all what is happening to us, good things, bad things. Some sometimes good things happen one of the other, one of the other, good things happen, and sometimes bad things happen one of the other. Back to bank, bad things happen, and it's so discouraging, demoralizing that the whole hope simply shatters, and you the as well the whole world is so gloomy. It does happen to everybody, not just to you. It happens to everybody, keep that in mind. Particularly younger ones, right? All these many experiences are yet to, the, the hurdles are there for us to, to face, for us to encounter. So this is what we need to keep in mind, that, that the 
whatever thing happens to us. For example, say, in your dream, in your dreams, they say, sometimes very pleasant dreams come to you, sometimes very unpleasant dreams come to you. Okay, sometimes in the same dream, that both pleasant and unpleasant dreams happen one to the other. Okay, how many of you had that experience? In the same dream, both pleasant and unpleasant dreams happen within the same span of the, 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 the sleep of the dream. Raise your hands. That's strange. Okay, those who have very pleasant dreams at least once in a year, at least once in a lifetime. Raise your hands. <laughs> unpleasant dreams at least once in a lifetime. Raise your hands. Okay, no dream at all in your lifetime. Okay, which means that we all had the dreams. Now tell me, to my question to you, this is a very serious question. Okay, and then don't think that there must be a, the, the philosophy answer. Give your answer that is coming from your heart. There's no hard and fast rule to say that this is the correct one, this is the incorrect one. No, just speak your mind, that is the correct answer. My question to you is that in your dream, in your dream, you dreamt of, say, the, you dreamt of you facing difficulties or you facing the loss of your near and dear ones. For example, in my dream, one time before the loss of my father, like one year ago, one year before I actually lost, I lost my father, I had a dream of my, the, the, my father, you know, passing away and it was very the sad moment, and from distance I was shouting to my father, don't worry, pray, don't worry, I'm just, you know, consoling him. I woke up, it, it, was, it was quite the uh, paranoia. Okay, imagine that you had such a dream, you are going through such a dream now, right? And then the dream where people have been unjust to you, People be so bad to you. Okay. You wake up from this very the traumatic dream or the nightmarish dream. You wake up, you feel very relieved. Tell me, in the dream, in the dream, who is responsible for all these, you know, somebody being nasty to you, fighting with you and so forth? Who is responsible? You, now you wake up. In the dream, I ask you who is responsible, you will blame the other person. When you wake up, who, who is responsible for that? Huh? You fought. Then, why you said that you are responsible? Why? This is very serious. Tell me why you are responsible. Because this is all creation of my own mind. My mind is playing a trick. Mind was playing a trick on me. Yes? No. Yes. Nobody is to blame. No one is to be blamed for your bad dreams. It's simply your mind which projected this bad dream. So, if you realize that it is me, it is my mind who created all these dreams and all these nasty things happening in a dream, I'm only to be responsible. You are getting it? Okay. So, with this, because it's quite the, the tight, okay, just stretch your two hands. Okay. And then gently don't, gently close it with you. Okay. Okay. So this sound, this sound is the metaphor for the anxiety, suffering, panic attack, and the sadness, and the feeling of loneliness, feeling of low. This sound is the metaphor for that. So this sound should necessarily come into being by the combination of two hands. Do you agree with me or not? Okay. However strong one hand is, no sound. So the one hand symbolizes external factors and the other hand symbolizes internal factors. So external factors, okay, well, because of this person, because of my neighbor, because of my boss, because of my the ideas, because of my, the, my mother, the father, you, we just have so many, the, you say, being, uh, the blames, you know, this is this, because of this, because of, we never say it's because of me, it's all because of me. So, and the, okay, so with this, the point is that the, while there are two, two hands, one is external factors, the other one is internal factor. Two hands are responsible. Okay. Now, okay, 
while two, while both hands are responsible, right? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? That some people, they go to the extreme of blaming the outside. Others, they are expert in blaming inside, right? Who go into spiritual, who go into spiritual, and not getting the full spirituality, not knowing the full meaning of the spirituality, they blame us. Oh, it's all because of myself. I'm the bad one. I'm the hopeless one. Oh, no, nobody should blame only me. I'm the hopeless one. And then you feel so demoralized. You just criticize yourself. You hate yourself. Sometimes spiritual people they turn up, turn like this, turn out to become like one like this. Other times people they are so expert in blaming outside. For example, say because of I stretched my hand and then I hit the flower and the flower the vase they fall and it breaks and it the the piece of glass fall the hits back and my hand is cut I'll blame May who's sitting next to me right it's because of May there that you know the, it fell as it is my hand it's me but I blame someone who's also close by he's the the victim. Because of blame, they may that it fell, right? That I hit and it fell. I just, okay, did it happen sometimes, right? So, particularly when we are young, we instantly blame outside, right? You, <laughs> your tea, your tea mug fell and it broke, and whosoever is nearby, you blame the child, right? This is our tendency. This is our will. One extreme is always blaming outside, always blaming outside. Other extreme is always blaming yourself. I'm so bad, I'm hopeless. Okay, so these two are extremes. These two are extremes. The only hope, finally, you blame outside is also with the intention, with the motivation, or with the intention that I will get out of my, that I should get out of my fear. That I should get out of my problems. Then blaming inside is also with the intention that I should get out of my fear. I should get out of my problems. This is intention, but this aspiration will never be materialized if you go to the extreme. I'll always blame outside or always blame inside. Always be very realistic. Only, only those people who are realistic, these people, when they meet with the correct path, they will achieve enlightenment, not others. And all can be realistic. If you're not realistic at the moment, we can learn how to be realistic. What do you mean by realistic? Okay, let's say that, okay, say the, I asked you to do the work so fast, right? I used to do the, the okay, I expect you to clean this hall up within two minutes. And you cannot finish. First of all, for people to get out, it will take time. Right? Then coming, then remove all these things, then cleaning will take time. It, in two minutes, nothing can happen. But I want it two minutes. And then, you say, why are you, you, are, why, you, are you, why are you not able to do that? What is your, what is your response? It's not, huh? it's not justifiable. Why is it not justifiable? Because the time given is very, very short. Time, who gave the time? Tell me. I gave. I gave the time very short. And you are not as fast like a machine. Right? You are not fast. And I want it so fast. Right? Me telling you that you must do it within five minutes or ten minutes or two minutes. This is external factor. And you not as competent as so efficient is the internal factor. And we are so expert in blaming our sign. Because you time you give a very short amount of time. Right? Okay, what I'm saying is that internal factor, external factor, both are responsible. That me giving you a very short span of time is also responsible, and you being not competent to do within short span of time is also responsible. Both are responsible. You're getting it? Well, we should be very realistic means that, okay, I should also, okay, so within, within 20 minutes, can you do that? Cleaning up this hall, can you do that within 20 minutes? In some places, impossible. Within 20 minutes, first 20 minutes, people need you know, time to talk to each other. Have tea together. Tea, okay, plan. Okay, we have to clean the hub, clean this hall. Yes, 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 yes. What is the movie like? <laughs> right? So that way we see that first, 
This is a culture in many places. This is a culture in many places. You're getting it? Okay, in Hong Kong, I was fascinated. Once I was traveling from Mongolia, Hong Kong transit, and then coming to India. I was, I was fascinated. People there working so efficiently within like, I think, 10 minutes, aeroplane cleaned up. Within 10 minutes, I was so fascinated. The only bad thing is that they, there's no smile. <laughs> That's the bad thing. Efficiency is amazing. Where there's smile, efficiency is not there. They'll not finish in 10 minutes. They'll not, they'll say that, what is one hour? We need two hours. Right? We need two hours. But the, so then they have to smile. They don't have the efficiency. Those that have efficiency, they don't have to smile. Okay, so what I'm saying is that both factors are responsible. We should be very realistic. We should be very realistic to acknowledge that external factors are also responsible, internal factors are also responsible, right? Only those who are very realistic people, if they pursue through the journey of the path, gade gade, they will succeed in achieving enlightenment. This is for sure. Okay, so with this in mind, with this mind, then the, the next point is, the next point is, one, that we should be very realistic. We should be very realistic. Then from this point of view, external factors are there, internal factors are there. How we clap the, the, the two hands, so the sound arrows, external factors, internal factors are there. Now, external factors, try your best. Try your best, which is so important to make sure that the external factors are taken care of. Internal factors are taken care of. External factors, internal factors, both. Some say it's purely mental. What depression is purely mental is your thinking. No, that's not easy. Depression is not easy. If the same feeling of, you see, what we discussed yesterday was what? The five mental factors. What are they? Contact. Contact. Attention. Attention. Discrimination. Discrimination. Feeling. Intention, right? Intention not to go out. Intention to always just stay inside. Intention, also, all these things are determined by feeling. And the feeling, unless and until somebody goes through depression, one will not have that experience of that very, very agonizing, corrosive feeling. That feeling, if anybody has it, there's no choice other than go for depression. There's some people, they talk as though like, because one has no experience. So one easily denies that, oh, but is that this just self-made problem? No, it's not self-made. If you go through this feeling, you also go through the depression. So our job is how to, how to, to say the, how to mitigate the intensity of the feeling, unpleasant feeling, through rectifying the Discrimination, the cognitive process, by modifying, by rectifying, by changing the cognitive discriminatory, the mental factor. So this is what we are trying to do. Okay. So with this, what I'm saying is that, in other words, in other words, the, the problems, the problems, external factors, internal factors, you just blame internal all the time. This is also one extreme. So in other words, what, what is important is to take care of the external factors. So for example, in some places, in some places, don't go in the night, don't go out in the night in some places. Right? If boys, girls, both can be very dangerous, robbers can come and attack you at any time. Right? And then don't eat in the place where, you, don't eat from the restaurants where it is so clean, tidy, nobody going there, right? So clean, spacious, nobody going there. And the, the restaurant, very crowded, oh, it's so crowded, I don't want to go there, it's very cozy, the clean place, nobody, very peaceful, you go there, you'll get all the stale food, right? In a crowded place, all this crowded, you will not like it, but you'll get fresh food. Because they, they don't have enough food to keep there. All food, you know, they have to suck, do it very quickly. So all from this, what I'm saying is that external factors, you have to smart, or you should be smart enough to take care of the external factors. It's not purely 100% internal, one thing. 
Then, for the long-term measure, external factors, how many such external factors are there? Tell me. External factors we can, which can potentially create problem on you. Okay, by the way, I'd like to ask some, some of you just volunteer. Volunteer and tell me, what problems, some say very severe problems in your life, if you can share some of your problems, problems you really felt so painful, any problem, very quick, just share, the, share with all of us, very quick, two or three incidents, anyone? Uh, anybody? You don't want to share? Maybe, didn't you, US, you, you like to share something? Some problem in your life? Um, criticism? Okay, don't just make it very vague. Make it real. Okay, the boss criticizes me. Very good. Anybody else? Did we? Mother angry. Mother is angry towards me, okay. Me? Uh, can't find a job. Huh? I cannot find a job. These people are so unkind. No, they're not giving me a job. Okay. Ash? Uh, mom go through a hard time with maybe some Okay, the mom. Okay, some major hard time, so that pains me. Anybody else? Aki? Okay. Okay, your parents met accident, okay. Yes, we which end? I'm bought by my job and I have no choice. Sorry again? I'm bought by my job and I have no choice but to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do I can follow you. I don't like my job, but I have no choice. I don't like my job. <laughs> okay, there's no choice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Did you notice one thing? Do you notice one thing in all these, right? Okay, so this prob these are all the problems. The problems are caused by the two hands. What are the two hands? External and internal, right? And how many of these incidences, in incidences display that internal factor is responsible for one problem or external factor, which is more? Huh? Okay. My boss criticized me, external, internal. External, right? And this job, I don't like this job. <laughs> There's no choice. <laughs> okay, external, internal. External, and what is me? I can't find a job. I can't find a job. All these people, they're so unkind. They don't give me a job. I'm very competent. Right? They don't give me a job, <laughs> right? They're not kind to give me a job. Okay, external. And the, okay, okay what is it? Your parents? Met with, met with accident. Okay, met with accident. Uh, yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what else? Who else? Okay, so what, you, what I'm saying is that it's not just with the, those people who courageously share their experience with us. It's with all of us. All of us. The fact that we feel unhappy with the incident means that the most likely we blame our side. We blame our side. You're getting it? And outside factors, are they responsible? Yes, for sure they're responsible. But the internal factors also there. Internal factors also there. You're getting it? In fact, for all these problems, for all these problems, including what Aki said, which is otherwise, you know, which otherwise acceptable to the world, that when you see you're somebody who you love so much meet with an accident, you feel, you know, pain. There also there's a solution. Get out of this pain. You're getting it? Okay. So the point is, what we're learning here is that external factors are there. And these external factors, how many such external factors are there which can potentially create problem on you? Potential pain, create pain on you. How many such external factors are there? Huh? Roger? Infinite external factors are there, right? Infinite external factors are there. Okay. Say, when you go out, when you go out, then they say, when you go out, when there's nobody there, you feel lonely. 
I'm very lonely. When you see the, the other people there, right? I have no privacy. <laughs> Again, this is a problem. Look, if you're by yourself, there's a problem. I'm feeling lonely. If you go into a, the tram or MRT, and there's nobody in the, 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 in the MRT, it's very scary, right? <laughs> um, if there's crowd, Again, there's a problem. So much crowd, you come to the crowd, right? You also contribute to the crowd, <coughs> right? You also are part of this crowd. You may, because of you, there's an extra person there to make the crowd even more crowdy, <laughs> right? But you don't see that. Okay, this is who we are. So external factors, how many such external factors are there? As Roger said, it's innumerable external factors there. The point is, by blaming external factors, if you can get rid, get rid of all the problems with external factors, then of the sound, you remove the external factors, then internal, no sound. Just with internal, there's no sound. If this is what you can make, go for it. This is your path, gade gade, this is your path. Where, if you can remove the external factors completely, and you're, you're, of the two hands coming together, external factor removed, internal factors left, you don't blame the external factor, internal factor is fine, but the sound stops. Fine. If you can get rid of all the external factors, that that is your path. There's no hard and fast rule to say that, oh, path, you should be good, you should be kind, you should not do this. No, there's no hard and fast rule. The point is that your misery should come to an end. Immediate measure and long-term measure. Immediate measure is where your problem is mitigated. The say lesson. And the long term measure, your problem should be got rid of from the root. These are two things that we should work on. And the wise people will look for both, but they will emphasize on the long term measure. Wise people. And the unwise people will focus on the immediate. They will not think about the long term measure. Long term measure, they will see if you go for the long term measure means you go into the say, emptiness, bodhicitta, then coming to TBC more, coming to ABC more, then other people say, what are you doing? You're so weird. What happened to you? Something wrong with you. Right? This is how they look at you. When you're looking for the long-term measure, those unwise people will see you as very weird. Actually, they're weird. <laughs> because they don't think about the long-term measure. The fact is that they also don't want the suffering altogether. They want to get rid of the suffering altogether. They want to get rid of that. But they're not thinking of getting rid of that. Okay, so with this mind, the, now what is wise to do? If you want to get rid of your suffering altogether, what should you be, be doing? Or the two hands, to get rid of the external factor completely or to get rid of the internal factor completely? So wiser to do is to get rid of the internal factors completely. So what is that internal factor? Internal factor, primarily two. Internal factor two. External factors, multiple, infinite. It is impossible that we can think of getting, get rid of the external factors completely. Internal factors, only two. One is self-grasping ignorance, misperception of the self, and the other one is this self-centered attitude, selfishness. Selfishness, self-centered attitude. And the other one, misconception of the self, which is also referred to as self-grasping ignorance. And these two are not the same. Oftentimes people see these two as the same, these two are not the same, these two are very different. These two are just two in number, whereas tackling the external factors is innumerable, infinite number. You cannot possibly, you can take care of them as the immediate measure to mitigate your problem, but to get rid of the, all the external factors is impossible. Okay, so with this, what is this internal factor? What are the internal factors? Self-grasping self ignorance and self-centered attitude too, right? Okay. This is just for information, particularly those who are those who are already into the, the deeper studies for these last many years. Uh, for you, what I'm going to share with you is going to be, okay, yes, that is, you will agree. But those who are new, for you, this is going to be like, um, you know, exposure. I'm exposing you to the, this very extremely important concept. But I see that, okay, I see that there are many new faces. Uh, from the, okay, new faces. For you, this is going to be a very good exposure. This will be like a way, like a blueprint for your next journey. Okay, 
Self grasping ignorance. Self grasping ignorance, the first one. Number two is self centered. These two. When these two are together, we cannot get out of the problems. No matter, say, say the, no matter how, what a good conditions that you're in, external facilities, you will never have a sense of satisfaction. You will never have a sense of, you know, fearlessness. And fear increases. And the fear that somebody is, the fear of the two kinds of people. One who is very poor, one who has just all the riches of the world. These two people, in, in terms of the fear, the fear of the person with wealth, that fear is much, much more intense than the fear of the one who doesn't have. Right? Fear of losing the wealth. This acute fear, fear of competition, the fear of, say, the, the people being jealous of you. They are so intense and corrosive, which the people who, who are not so wealthy, they don't have the experience. Right? Okay. So the point what I'm saying is that these two things, self-grasping, ignorance, self and attitude, as long as we have these two problems, there's no ultimate solution. We can have temporary respite and superficial happiness is there, but deep inside, the fear is always there. The moment you encounter the external factor, the fear is there, unhappiness is there. Okay, how do these two... Okay, so what I said is that these are the two internal factors, self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude. And... And so if you don't want to say, if these two are gone rid of, if these two are gone rid of, then of the two hands, you remove the other hand. Then you are left, only left with one hand, which symbolizes the external factors. However strong, however ferocious, however strong, other hand, the sound of the misery stops. Your, all the fears, anxiety, stress, they will stop. Okay. For sure, there are people who go through a you know, stressful life, who go through some kind of physiological, physiologically, or because due to hormone, hormonal change, or whatever, they feel the anxiety attack. I come across many people, and the, okay, including those, some of those who are very, you know, uh, since my childhood, I know some of them. So how to tackle those things? So some are genetic, some are because of the, the, the neural structures, because of the neural structures, some are because of the genetic, and some are because of the environment, some are because of the, the immediate adventitious factors, multiple factors are there, multiple factors are there. And of course, in all these factors, one is really, for sure is really one factor is, the governing factor is the karma. Previous karma is there. There's a governing factor. So this can manifest in the different forms. Different forms in some people, say their physical body becomes so weak, and then they display this anxiety attack. Some people, they have a genetic the disorder, which they inherited from their parents. And then at a certain age, they display this the anxiety attack, depression, so forth. And some people, say the, the brain, the, neuro, the neural circuits, there's some problem, the synaptic connections, there's some problem there, and then the depression can happen. And in some cases, it's en environmental. Environmental, say, when you, you, when you're in an environment where you hear only bad things, you see only bad things over and over again, then it can slowly be translated into your own thinking, and then it can give you anxiety attack. And then, of course, the immediate factors like the, the loss of somebody who you love so much, and then you are mentally not prepared. Then you end, end up into deep, deep depression and so forth. So for all these, the, the, the solutions are there, right? Solutions are there, but the point is, what solutions? This is the, what we need to think of. Okay, so the point is, what I'm saying is how, okay, if this is what you learn till this point, what would be your next question to me? What's the solution? Huh? What's the solution? solution for what? To get rid of external factors? Yeah, be very precise. 
what are the solutions for the internal factors? External factors, what we said is that, external factors, what we said is that take, do your best to curb external factors, do your best. But don't expect that all external factors can be got rid of and then you will have the no sound of the clan. It's impossible, right? So the only possibility long-term plan is to get rid of the internal factor. So what is the question? How to get rid of the internal factors? Or, okay, how to get rid of the internal factors? This is the, the point. For that first we need to know how these two internal factors contribute to the problem. If you know this, if you're convinced of this, then we will know, we'll learn how to get rid of these two internal factors. Okay, one, I'll give you the, so this is actually what in the monastic universities, they study for years and years, 10, 20 years, and when to do in this three days. <laughs> not, not full day, three days. It's four hours, three days. No, two hours, four hours, four hours. 10 days, 10 hours. Right? And then in the monastic universities, with all these rigorous studies, memorization, explanation, debates, discussion, study, psychology, philosophy, all these things intact for the last like 10, uh, 10 years, then the, only then they tackle this. Right? And we are doing it in 10 hours. Okay, we are doing it in 10 hours. Okay, so for this matter, for this matter, and keep in mind that the Buddha taught how to tackle these internal factors. Even for the Buddha to teach this, Buddha did not teach this for 49 days. Buddha remained silent. After becoming enlightened, he did not teach for 49 days. And we are teaching directly, and that too in, in 10 hours, right? Okay, Buddha did not teach for 49. Buddha remained silent for, literally the Buddha remained silent for 49 days. After becoming enlightened, he did not teach for 49 days. Why? He was requested by the kings of the, the devas and devis, kings, kings of the gods and goddesses. They dissented to make requests. The Bhagavan, meaning the enlightened one, the full awakened one, please don't remain silent. Whole purpose for you to become enlightened is to benefit the beings by giving them teachings. Now that you've become enlightened, you are not giving teachings. Please don't remain silent. Please turn the wheel of Dharma, give teachings. And the Buddha said one stanza. So there, what the Buddha said is, the path which I've discovered, the path which I've discovered is so profound, very peaceful. It's devoid of elaboration. It's a clear light. It's a non-composite. Such a nectar-like path which I've discovered it's so profound that hardly I find anybody who can fathom the depth of this teaching. In silence, I'll return to the wood. This is what he said. Okay, then through more requests, supplication made to the Buddha by these two god, the god kings, Indra and Brahma. Finally, the Buddha they start to give the teachings. Okay, so the now I can't really expect to give everything just in like the now. We have total four hours. I can't do that in four hours. Okay, at least I'll give you some example. One, the function of the self-grasping. What does the self-grasping self do? What does the self-centered attitude do? You're getting it? Yes, sir, true. One, self-grasping, ignorance. Okay. See? Um, tonight, Tonight, you go to sleep. You put your head on your pillow. And then you slowly you fall asleep. And then the dream starts to happen. Dream starts to happen. And in the dream, in the dream, it so happens that, in the dream, it so happens that it is your birthday. And then the mother comes to you with the cheesecake. Right? Mother comes to you with a cheesecake and you're so happy. You're so happy. Then the cat jumps on the cheesecake <laughs> and topples the cheesecake. 
you would be so angry, unhappy. What an inauspicious thing. Or my bird is spoiled by this cat. Okay. Tell me. And then you wake up. You wake up. Are you affected by the dream? How come that this, this cat was so bad? It, it spoiled my birthday. Do you still feel that? You will not feel that anymore. You will not feel that. And do, would you have the, the, just the, the thought of this mother bring the cheesecake, right, in the dream, that dream when you recall, does it really water your mouth? No, it's just a dream cheesecake. You're getting it? Okay, so this dream, finally it affected your mind. One, the cheesecake is there, one. So excited. Then the next, the cat jumps on it, topple, topples that. Then so much anger arises in you. These two emotions, attachment, aversion, these two happens. So attachment means that your mind is pulled by the object. Aversion means your mind is pushed by the cat. Pushed by the cat. Pull and push. Okay, what pulled and what pushed your mind? That is just a dream. Do you agree with me or not? Do you agree with me? What pulled you and what pushed you? When you? Upon you waking up, what pulled you in the dream? What pushed you in the dream? That was just a dream that pulled you and pushed you. Yes? No. Okay, now when you wake up, are you going to be pulled by the cheesecake? Are you going to be pushed by the, the dream cat? No. This pull and push. Right? Because it is not that you are voluntarily going there. It is just but pulled by the dream. If the dream cheesecake is not there, your mind will not be pulled. So dream cheesecake, it pulled your mind. That is the involuntary pull. And the cat jumps and topples it. And then you become so angry towards the cat, it pushes you away from the cat. Involuntary push. So this involuntary pull and push is because of the because of what? Involuntary pull and push, pull and push happening in the dream is because of what? Because of because of being in the dream. Okay, this pull and push by the dream cheesecake and the dream cat happen in the dream or outside the dream? Inside, inside the dream. Outside the dream, the pull and push is not there. Pull and push stops. You are free from the pull and push, right? So this pull and push, this pull and push is your choice or it was out of your choice in the dream? Out of your choice, without your choice, right? If there's, you're doing the out of choice, then when you wake up, you should still have the choice to do that. But you're not doing it, right? Which is better? Involving pull and push in the dream is better or that you wake up and the pull and push stops, which is better? Wake up and pull and push stops. So this involuntary pull and push is the loss of freedom. Loss of freedom is misery. That is samsara. If somebody asks you what is samsara, the loss of freedom is samsara. What is meant by loss of freedom? Involuntary pull and push. I don't want to be if somebody if somebody grab if somebody grab the uh, Moses here, if somebody grab Moses and pull and push like this, Moses would say no human rights. Right, human rights violation, because he doesn't want somebody to pull and push, right? So the dream is the one who is pulling and pushing. You're getting it. So why you are saying that no human rights, human is a human rights violation because you are losing your freedom. Loss of freedom is misery. Misery is samsara. If somebody asks, what is samsara? Loss of misery is samsara. Loss of freedom is samsara. What is loss of freedom? Involuntary pull and push. That is samsara. Right? Okay. Now the next point is, so this involuntary pull and push happens in the dream, not, out, not outside the dream. Only in the dream. Why? Tell me. Why? Why the involuntary pull and push happen in the dream and not outside the dream? Anybody? Very quick. Why the involuntary pull and push? Okay, don't think that he must be expecting a philosophy answer. Just give your, just speak your mind. Why this involuntary pull and push? Involuntary pull and push meaning the, the dream cheesecake pulling you and the dream cat toppling the cheesecake 
pushing you, make you angry. And the moment you wake up, so this pull towards the cheesecake and push by the, the dream cake, dream dream cat will stop. Why this involved push push is happening in the dream? Why it stops when you wake? Why? Anyone quick? Okay. Do you agree with Wilson that when you wake up, you realize that it was not real? That it was just a dream. Do you, do you agree with me? Do you agree with Wilson that the dream cheesecake and the dream cat, the dream cheesecake which pulled me, and the dream cat which pushed me, these two are just dream. They are not real. Because of which involvement push and push, involvement push and push stops. Do you agree with me? Very good. In a way, what you are saying is that why the involuntary pull and push happen in the dream is because you see the dream, you see the dream cheesecake and the dream cat as real cheesecake and cat. But when you wake up, you see the dream, the dream cat and the dream cheesecake as dream. Okay, which of the two is which of the two which of the two tallies with the reality? The dream, the first one in the dream, seeing the dream as real. Or seeing the dream as dream, which tallies with the reality. Or seeing the dream as dream, that is tallies with the reality. This is wisdom. So this wisdom is inside the dream or outside the dream? Outside the dream. Whereas in the dream, you see the dream as real. Seeing the dream as real is ignorance or wisdom. Ignorance. So the outcome of ignorance is the involuntary pull and push. The anger and so forth. Outcome of wisdom is pull and push stops. Your freedom is restored. You're getting it? Okay. So now the point is, who created this dream then? Who created this dream? My own mind. My own mind created this dream. You're getting it? Within your mind, there are so many kinds of mind. Some compassionate mind, some ignorant mind, some wisdom mind. There are so many kinds of mind. Which mind is responsible for creating this dream, ignorant mind, right? So the, this mind first creates the dream. And then that creation made you to believe that this dream is real. That is the metaphor. Seeing the dream as real is the metaphor for the self-grasping ignorance. Don't forget it. Seeing the dream as real is the metaphor for self-grasping ignorance, misconceiving the self. So how many of you have been to shopping malls? Okay, no boys are raising their hands, so only the girls. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the okay. So self grasping ignorance, it is like the one who creates the dream and one who creates the shopping mall. <laughs> self grasping ignorance is the one who creates the dream as real and the shopping mall is very beautiful. Then what happens? Then the self centered attitude comes in. Self-grasping ignorance creates the shopping mall, right? The dream shopping mall. And the self-centered attitude then comes in. Okay, I like this, I like this, this is very nice, this is not good, this is very... And then your, your, your parents, oh, this is going to be your gift, you know, from the, the mobile, right? The, from the many, the, the ranges of mobile. Your mother picks you up a very cheap mobile. This is your birthday gift. No, you are looking for something else. What is that? iPhone X. You are looking at this. Right? Okay, so what I'm saying is that, say, you go there, and all these things are displayed there. Shopping malls created by the owner. And then you go there. What, with what? Self-centered attitude. I want the best. I want the best. I'm the one who deserves the best. Self-centered attitude goes into the shopping mall, then pick up. I want this, I don't want this. The mother says, okay, this, this mobile is very good. It's the, uh, the $200. $200. No, I want the, what the, was the, the cost of the iPhone X? Huh? 1000 2000 Okay, iPhone X with 128 GB is 2000 <laughs> $2, right? Okay, they want that, right? I don't want this with the, the 200 Dollars I want with the two thousand dollars I want that that is good, right? Okay, I remember when I was very young, when I was in the, the school. It's beautiful, amazing. 
you must learn the skill. <laughs> I was in class 11. Class 11, the, I was the, the, say, in charge of the hostel, boys' hostels, what do you call it? The, uh, the, all the soap, toothpaste, logistics, uh, amenities, amenities. So I was in charge of that. And then I decide what to, to give to who. And the, say the, for washing the clothes, there was the soap bar. The bar, the soap bar. And soap bar, there are two kinds. One, which is very hard, it doesn't give any form. <laughs> other one, and this is big size. And other one's very small size, it gives form very easily. And then the one boy, I was shocked to hear that. He was my classmate, not really classmate, he was my bashmate. Age-wise, I think same. So he said, Dorji, I need to sew. So when somebody comes, I have to give. So I prefer to give the, 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 the big one, the, because I want to dis dispose that first. <laughs> then he knew, that, he knew that, he knew that, okay, now he's going to give me the, the form, without form, right? One. So he said then, oh, Dorji, it's fine if you give me the smaller one. He said, Dorji, it's fine. For me, it's fine if you give me the smaller one. Right? He's not greedy. He, draws, he doesn't want the big one. He wants the small one. It's fine. Right? So I have to give the smaller one. So how he spoke was so nice. It's good. It's just fine if you give me the smaller one. Right? And I knew that he's very smart. Wow. This is a very different way of saying this. It's very, it's putting in such a way that other person, you know, other person feels that, other person feels, okay, he is very, what do you call it? Uh, no. Uh, he's very... Uh, no, no. So what I would say is that, okay, how he put it, if you say that oof, cheesecake smaller and bigger one, oh, it's okay if I get a smaller one. No, no, no. If, you, if I say this, what do you really think of me? Oh, he's a very kind, humble, and what else? Consideration. Consideration, humble. How he presented was, he did not say that I want the, the better, smaller, better one. I said, it's fine if I give the smaller one. <laughs> so which means that I'm humble, but deep inside is very opposite. <laughs> I want the better one. You're getting it? This is how he presented. Okay, now what I'm saying is that shopping mall was created by the owner. And then the, that is like the self-grasping ignorance created the dream of the shopping mall. Then in the dream, you do not know that it is a dream. Then you go to the shopping mall. Then you start picking up. Who is picking up? Who, wants to see, who says that this is good, this is not good? When the bad things given to you, you feel unhappy. When the bad, good things given to you, you're very happy. Who is that? Self, I, this I is very important, right? Self-centered attitude, self-grasping ignorance creates the shopping mall. Self-centered attitude goes there to pick up the things, discard things which the person doesn't like, and pick up things which the person likes. So if the self-grasping ignorance does not create this dream of the shopping mall, you don't have choice. If the shopping mall is not created by the owner, you don't have choice, you have to go to a small shop. Whatever is available there, you have to pick that up. But it's with the shopping mall, then you start to pick up things. Self-centered attitude, self-grasping, these two things work hand in hand to create all the afflictive emotions, anger, jealousy, competition, all these things, with these two things intact. Self-grasping creates the shopping mall, self the dream of the shopping mall, and the self-centered attitude goes to pick that up. Oh, this is good, this is not bad, this is bad, this is good. All these things come into being by the combination of this self-grasping and self-centered attitude. Okay, and of the two, for your information, of the two, which is more difficult to get, get rid of fully? It's a self-centered attitude. To get rid of this fully from the root is much more difficult to, than to get rid of self-grasping ignorance. Just for information, self-grasping ignorance is cognitive in nature. Self-grasping ignorance is cognitive in nature. Self-centered attitude is affective in nature. Cognitive and affective. Cognitive meaning, okay, yes, 
This is the shopping mall there, this is the mobile there, this is the, the cheap mobile, this is the expensive mobile. These are all cognitive processes. This is the self-grasping ignorance. Misconceiving the dream as real. Then the self-centered attitude then go, goes to act on it. I like it, I don't like it. The moment you say, I like it, I don't like it, this is effective. I have affection towards my mother. Means I like it. So I like it, I don't like it, this is effective. Without that sense of affinity, you just say that, oh, this is good, this is not good, this is mobile, this is not mobile, so forth. This is cognitive. So self-centered, -gra self self-grasping ignorance is cognitive in nature, and self-centered attitude is affective in nature. So these two, only when these two come together, then all these, say, the afflictive obscurations, afflictions can arise, disturbing emotions can arise. When the disturbing emotions arise, then what happens? Then all the physical, verbal, and mental karmas come into being. These karmas, physical, verbal, mental karmas, then they decide to all our, say, the miseries. Okay, so this is how it operates. Now, the next question is, once you identify what a self-grasping ignorance and what self-centered attitude is, the next point is, how what? How to get rid of these two? Okay, now it becomes a little easy for us. Self-grasping ignorance, it is ignorance. Right? Okay, see, in the dream, you see the dream is real. How do you get rid of this problem? Seeing the dream is real, how do you get rid of this problem? Wake up. By waking up, you get rid of this problem. How? By knowing that the dream is not real. The dream is dream. You're getting to wake up. Likewise, this ignorance, which, which, sees, which makes you see things so real outside, so real outside there, what you are seeing, Moses, do you see the flowers real or like a dream? Real, right? Okay, so we see that this is so real, outside, so real. Okay. Just recently, I think yesterday, 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 two days ago, I received one the WhatsApp message from somebody and who said that, Kishila, I learned about all this emptiness, everything's not real, so forth. For all these many years, like two or three years, I thought she was going to say like 20 or 30 years. She said, I learned for so many years. Then the next one said, oh, two, three years. OK, I thought it's going to be like 20, 30. It's not really 20, 30. It's like two years, 30 years. And then she said that, that the, I learned all these things. Everything is like dream, empty, so forth. But when I go through the problems, the problems are so real, the tragedies. The pains, they are so real. This meditation do not help, right? Which meditation for how long which she did? I don't know whether it's correct meditation or not correct meditation. Even if it's correct, she did not for 20 years, right? People talk about 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and lives, many lifetimes, right? So therefore, the point is that how to get rid of this self-grasping ignorance is by waking up. How to wake up? Self-grasping ignorance sees things as real. Now the waking up meaning self-grasping ignorance is the ignorance. What's observe ignorance? Wisdom. wisdom. You have to cultivate the wisdom. What wisdom do you need? Self-grasping ignorance says that everything's not like dream, everything's so solid, so objectified there. It's self-grasping ignorance. Now you have to cultivate the wisdom. Tell me. Okay, okay, what I'm holding, what I'm holding, this is a chocolate. Is this wisdom or ignorance? ignorance? Ignorance. What I'm holding, this is a flower. Wisdom of ignorance. Wisdom. Okay. Okay. I'm in Singapore. Wisdom of ignorance. Oh, I'm in New York. Manhattan. <laughs> wisdom of ignorance. Ignorance. You're getting it? Okay. Now, how many such wisdoms are there? How many such wisdoms are there? Innumerable wisdoms are there. Any correct cognitive processes are wisdom. Any correct cognitive processes. This is a flower. I'm in TBC. Okay, it is in the daytime, not in the nighttime. So there are beautiful tangas around us. And tomorrow is Sakadawa, the 15th, the, this very the holy day. This is all wisdom. Okay, but 
tell me, if, if I say that, okay, I'm a little scared, I'm a little scared, okay, how will you get rid of my fear, right? How, may, how will you get me fear? Then Lianchu, Lianchu may say that, oh, Kishida, don't worry, TBC doesn't have tiger. <laughs> you don't be afraid, TBC doesn't have tiger. Is it true or not? TBC does, do they, they, uh, TBC, do they have tiger? No tiger, that's true, that's wisdom. But still I'm afraid. Still that there's a fear in me. Then, then Roger comes. Roger says, okay, so I told him, then you told him that there's no tiger in Tibet house? No, TBC, not Tibet house. Okay, <laughs> the, there's no tiger, still his fear is not gone. Okay, so his fear is not good. He can go into depression. Oh, Dorji, don't worry. Don't worry. There's no elephant in TBC. Is it true or not? True. There's also wisdom. It's true. There's no elephant. That's true. But still, my fear is there, right? Okay, Moses, tell me, how, should you, how will you help me? Why are you, why are you fearful? No, no, no. What is the fear? Why is huh? what's your fear? What is your fear? Yeah, why are you fearful? Okay. Okay. So, so, why are you fear? Why is there fear in you? This is a very question. question. So I said, uh, I'm in fear because of the because of the because of the because of the dengue. Dengue or dengue? Okay, in Singapore is dengue. In, other, in some places is dengue. Okay. Yeah, both are correct. <laughs> right. Okay. So the oh, I'm afraid of dengue. I'm afraid of I'm afraid of dengue and malaria. Okay. So Moses says that don't worry, Gishila. TBC is mosquito-free zone. Mosquito-free zone. There's no mosquitoes there, right? It's mosquito-free zone. Then my I become relaxed. Okay. There's no tiger in TBC. Is it is it valid or not? There's no elephant in, in TBC. This is valid or not? Valid. And let's say that TBC is a mosquito also. TBC is mosquito-free zone. Yes, valid. no, valid. All three are valid, but it's not sufficient that, that the, any wisdom is helpful. There must be a very specific wisdom. Specific wisdom, which is directly in opposition with the ignorance pertaining to the how one sees the object. Ignorance says that my ignorance says that there must be mosquitoes here. And then the wisdom says that there is no mosquito. These two should be ignorance and the wisdom. What kind of wisdom is required? This is very important. What kind of wisdom is required is the wisdom which is directly in opposition with the ignorance pertaining to the object of apprehension. Let me say this again. What kind of wisdom is required is the wisdom which is directly in opposition with the ignorance, with wisdom which is directly in opposition with the ignorance pertaining to the object of apprehension. Wisdom should be the wisdom which is directly in opposition with the ignorance pertaining to the object of apprehension. Okay, this is what the ignorance says. Yes. Things are all real. They are all objectively real. Then the wisdom should, say, wisdom should say that that's not true. Things don't exist as real. They are like dream. This wisdom is required to get rid of the self-grasping ignorance. Okay, what will be the next question? Huh? The first question that you ask is how to get rid of the internal factors. Then I said that for the ignorance, we have to get rid of that by introducing the Wisdom, which is directly in opposition with the ignorance, pertain to the object of apprehension. So, what would be the next question? Uh, self centered is different. Pertain to the same part. What question would you ask? How to apply meaning? How to apply it? Apply it, apply it the, by study. Okay. Apply it. Uh, apply it by coming to DBC. Finish? <laughs> no. No. How to develop this wisdom? 
Okay, maybe uh, what you said is you meant it, how to develop it. This is what you meant. How to apply it, meaning how to develop this wisdom. How to develop this wisdom? Right? Okay, how to develop this wisdom? TBC, people, they come here. Books are available there on the shelf, right? There are many books. Are there books? One then la? Mimi? Are there books there on the shelf? How many books? One, two? Many books are there. And how many candles, candles are there behind you? Jocelyn? How many candles are behind you? Or how many flowers? Okay. So, what is the question? How to develop this wisdom? Right? Without developing this wisdom, you will be trapped in this sleep, ignorance, the dream. You will never be freed from this dream. So how to develop this wisdom? This is a question. So, in TBC, let's say in a very cursory form, there are three ways of developing the wisdom. One is by picking up those books. Another is by picking up those candles and offering to Buddha, Buddha, okay, please remove my ignorance and the, let my business be successful. <laughs> Uh, then you offer flowers to the Buddha. Here's the orchid flower for you, Buddha. Please make my business go successful. And then, if possible, let the wisdom born in me. Okay, so there are three ways. Of the three ways, the first one, pick up the books. If that does not happen, if that does not happen, picking up the books, if that is not happening, no matter how much you light the candles, how much you offer the flowers, say to the Buddha, Buddha, please remove my ignorance. It will never happen. Right? Okay. You can offer flowers. You can offer lamps. These are very, very conducive factors. But these are the conducive factors to ignite this lamp of wisdom. Right? So, we need the conducive factors plus the ignition light. Both should happen. Ignition light happens through picking up the books. Picking up these books, read the books, then the ignorance, as you say, oh, the wisdom of emptiness, everything's like a dream. Oh, how come everything's like a dream? I thought everything is real. And the book says that everything's like a dream. This is how you are kindling this light of the wisdom. Without picking up the book, you will never realize this. Even if you offer this light 100,000 times, Never will it occur to your mind that everything is like a dream. You're getting it? So therefore, so the facilities here in TBC, facilities here in TBC, and likewise in ABC, facilities there, there are many facilities. Some are conducive factors for igniting the lamp. Some are the real lamp of the wisdom. So the teacher, for example, here at the TBC, we have Kishinandala, and then ABC, you have your own teachers there. So these teachers are the, the best of the factors to ignite the light of the wisdom. Then the books are there. The books are there to ignite the light of the wisdom. And then the flower offerings, butterfly offerings, things are there. They are the conducive factors. Conducive factors, like indirect ways to ignite the light of the wisdom. You're getting it? So if you really want to cultivate, develop this light of the wisdom, it should be true the books and through making use of your teachers. That is very important. In other words, study, reflection, and meditation. Meanwhile, don't ignore the other things, like offering lambs, making prostrations, offering, say, the water, water balls, and so forth. Don't ignore these things. They are ex equally important. Equally important, uh, say, for the food, right? The for example, if you want to make a very delicious vegetarian tofu food, tofu is important or the salt is important? Huh? Tofu is important. Then remove the salt. <laughs> then what is it? Salt is important. Remove the tofu. No, both are required. Likewise, igniting the real ignition of the, the light of the wisdom is required, plus the conducive factors to enhance this, to make this ignition possible, both are required. So, making prostrations, then the saying prayers, chanting, uh, then the reading books, reflecting on, then attending teachings, and attending various courses. You are very fortunate. I'm saying this again. The Singaporeans are very, very fortunate. Very fortunate. This, in fact, this is the, the one of the places the people 
And the people, where the people are very fortunate. Because in this Singapore, we see that minimum. What I know is that there are two beautiful centers, fully functioning centers, where teaching is available in such a vibrancy, great vibrancy. This is so rare in other places. And with the residential teachers, whereas in many other places, there are centers there. There, there, are no resi there is no resi the residential teachers there. So this is a great, great opportunity for the Singaporeans. So with these faci facility available, and then you, then you, you, don't, you, you don't attend the classes, you don't attend the, the courses, and then you just engage yourself in the, say, the residing chanting and so forth. This is a great loss of the opportunity. Okay, we'll stop here, and we'll come back at 4.30.